You ready to go? I'm ready. I feel like there's something I want to talk to you about before we start recording, but uh, all right, let's go. Crack the beers. Crack the beers. All right. <clears throat> it's time to get ugly. PHP ugly. Episode 282. Coming your way. I'm your host, Eric Van Johnson, and with me tonight is my dear friend. Oh, I'm sorry, John's not here. It's just Tom. Hello. Hello, Thomas. How are you? Oh, I am good. I'm good. It's a rough week. Uh, it's a short week for you, right? Isn't that a short week? Do you, do you in the in the finance sector, not take a Good Friday off? It's so. not good if you're not making money, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think... Uh... I don't think we got it off. We'll check. Mm. Well, we got yeah. taxes. You get you get your taxes done. It's why are you attacking me right off the bat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, we're we're down we're down to the wire getting our taxes done this year. I mean, you know, we we uh we took on we took on PHP Architect and you know we have company tax to do so we have uh, two companies now php architect and diego dev and then personal taxes and so our business taxes are done they're actually the easy taxes to do because it's just like okay how much money did we make all right let's give you know we have to give the government this much money personal taxes are, are get a little uh a little bit more interesting so but yeah I don't invest know. in crypto to... and have to have to write that off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they, they're watching that now, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, oh yeah. <clears throat> so, all right. So, uh, hello, people in Discord. We got people in Twitch. Uh, Arcus, hi guys. What about? Do you speak over here? PHP stuff, man. PHP. Just, well, just sometimes. Click, click on through. Click on through. A Woods is with us, Sevy's with us. And if you're not with us, uh Zombie Slayer, sorry, sorry, Zombie Slayer was first to Discord. I'm I apologize. And if you're not with us, you can join us in our Discord at discord.phpugly.com. Or you can join us in one of the other stream chats, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, but you you don't get to just like suggest titles and stuff in there. But that's fine. No, it doesn't translate. Discord bot doesn't translate over to things that aren't Discord, oddly enough. Yeah. Yeah. I should I should really look into that and see if I can't fix that. Or or very least write the bot so that it works. Because I know Twitch does bots as well. So yeah. All right, we got people asking about John. John's on vacation this week. Um, wrapping up some family matters and taking some time with the family. So we we uh, we you will be back next week. I promise. I haven't fired him yet, but you know, he's uh he's right there in the bubble with me. <laughs> Do that right now. Ah, yeah. uh, what you so what did you? Times? Well, me first. I had I had a, you, I had. What are those this is nice... like this is like the old days. You and I, we did the podcast just you and I. I think for like the first year or two, because right when we decided to do the podcast, John decided to pop out another baby and and leave us. Yeah, and, yeah. And we had to have this awkward uh, interaction on a weekly basis. And back then, I think it was even more than weekly. I think we did it a couple times a week. Yeah, he was very busy establishing a an excessive. Uh, security system in his house with as many old webcams as he could find. <laughs> I've so, been, yeah. uh, well, I've been start with you. busy, busy, busy um, working on this API integration that just, it, it couldn't go right. Nothing on it was going right. Uh, it, it's pulling in thousands and thousands of records, writing them one at a time to the database uh, or updating a record if it already existed in the database. Uh, so, I mean, you know, for a thousand records, that's 2000 queries, basically. 
uh, just a, a hell of a problem to take on. Um, and you know, not working just for the longest time, not, not working for what basically for a week and a half, uh, I couldn't get it through QA. And today I got it through QA. Everything is working the way it's supposed to. Everything is, is nice and happy. And I just felt so good. You know, I, I feel like I just like burst out of a, a depressive state and I, I just finished up what I was doing and I started cleaning the house and doing chores and, you know, <laughs> like all the stuff I had just put off for a week and a half while this thing was killing me. Yeah, I see. You still haven't written your article for PHP Architect yet, but that's that's fine. I'm sh I'm sure that that's not on your happy path. Apparently, Clearly, well, no, it, happy path. It, it it is. I'm just not allowed to look at my happy path right now. <sighs> man, when are you gonna write an article for me? I'm hoping to do it soon. It's it's just one of those things, you know. I get done with my day, and it's like I just want to not be on a computer for a while and yet, so here you my, are yeah so i get on my phone i either get on my phone or i get on my other computer and play video games <laughs> <laughs> so i i have some i forgot to mention last week was opening day for baseball and lots of baseball i think we mentioned on. that but I didn't mention that there is new tech in baseball. And I thought it was kind of cool. I thought I'd talk to you about it. Have you heard about this yet? I No, I don't know what you're not talking about at all. It's called the PitchCom. This is a real thing. It's called PitchCom. So now, uh, the the you know how catchers and pitchers... The way they communicate with each other is by throwing signs down. The catcher yeah, throws yeah. signs between his legs. Right? That, that, this, yeah. yeah, the crotch sign language. Right. There's always been this little dicey thing about it, you know, about other teams stealing signs, especially when the other team had players on base. That's why usually if there are no players on base, the catcher will just throw down whatever sign it is he wants tossed. When there's a player on base, he'll throw down a combination of signs and they just know which one is the right sign. Yeah, we actually had talked about that in the past. Um, we talked about Mark Rober, who wrote an AI bot that just let him use his phone to steal signals within a couple innings. So But what was that was that pitching signals? I think that was I think that was hitter hitter. That was, that was so that was third yeah, so that was third baseman signals, but the mm -hmm. same application applies uh if you're yeah. you know paying attention well enough. Right. So they have this thing called pitchcom now. The catcher wears it on his wrist and he types in what pitch he wants thrown and the pitcher actually has a thing in his hat that will tell him what pitch to throw. And the cool thing about this, well, there's a, there's a lot of cool things about this. One, it's speeding up the game. So there's not this back and forth of the pitcher having to get ready, wait, wait, and when, you know, the, kid, the catcher's sitting there waiting for the pitcher to look at him and then throwing down the signs. The catcher can actually give him the sign as the pitcher is walking back to the mound or whenever they want. Pitcher gets on the mound and pitches. So it's speeding up the game. Um. Which of is course, extremely important in baseball. <laughs> I cannot express that enough. It's also uh, it's also making it much more difficult to steal signs currently. I'm sure that's only a matter of yeah. time or something. Today. Say. But it has a co couple cool applications to it. Um, one thing, it tells, it tells the pitcher what to throw in whatever language that pitcher before prefers. So the, the catcher, the, 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 the signs are the same, but it speaks whatever language in, as you know, in baseball, it's a very global sport. They have you know, people from around the world with a bunch of different language languages. But yeah. I also, believe Hideo, Hideo Nomo classically was a pitcher who only spoke Japanese, did not speak English. There's a couple of those e even uh, today as well. But also, what is also cool about it, about it is 
two fielders also have it in their cap. Typically, it's it's going to be the second baseman and the shortstop. The two middle f- fielders will have it in their bat in their hat. So they also know what the pitch is and they can position themselves correctly. It's pretty cool stuff, man. I'm like, hey, that's pretty slick. I'm glad to see like technology creeping in. And this isn't like this isn't some earth shattering thing. Um, football has actually had a similar thing for a while. If you look, yeah, absolutely. If you've ever w- wondered uh, the, the dot defense, on the helmet, and yeah, on offense, uh, there's always a player with a dot on the helmet. It's typically the quarterback on offense, and then it's one of the defense players. And it's the same concept. It's uh, the coaches are able to talk directly to them. So, yeah. I, I, I think we need to get rid of the the behind-the-plate umpire, honestly. I, I think that's coming. I think it's coming, actually. I, I, I honestly feel like... Don't, I, don't take I, him I, off I feel the like field. I will see it. I will see it happen in my lifetime. I will see it happen. Yeah, I don't think you should kick him off the field, but I think you should get him from out from behind the catcher. Yeah, and and you know, and don't have him calling balls and strikes. Right, I think that's I think that's where we're we're going to, we're going to end up because, I and I think a lot of it's just going to be that eventually, the the umpires are just going to get tired of being shown up because they have replays now. They don't do replays on balls and strikes, but they get they have they get criticized on like they have umpires have stats and these stats are like public published right um, publicly and you know there's a lot of criticism with these umpires who have bad percentages of balls and strikes and i think eventually you know there's just going to be like well we don't want this anymore we don't want that responsibility there's no reason and it'll probably be something very similar to what you're seeing with pitchcom they'll probably just have something in their helmet they'll still be there They'll just have something in their helmet, and as soon as the pitch happens, a computer will say "ball strike, ball strike." And yeah, and just... that's that's going to be important for a number of reasons because there there's a lot of tactics by batters to crowd the box uh, to try and and change the umpire's perception of where the box is on them, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah. and it's, it's you know it's hard for these umpires to call it especially when you're at home watching it on the screen and it's got this clear line around exactly what the curve of the ball was the, right. you know, the foot before it missed the box or something like that. Like the, it's just instantaneous information and, and the umpires are starting to look really bad because they've got these solid numbers of times they're right and times they're wrong. Whereas before right. some newspaper analyst would have to review the recorded footage and decide for themselves if it was if it was a good call or a bad call, now it's just an absolute. Um, but mm-hmm. it's still left up to the umpire. Yeah. Well, and and I mean to be com- completely fair, right? It's like, um, uh, how far is the picture? The picture is uh, uh, is it sixty feet six inches? Is that is that how far a picture is from? No, that sounds too far. It can't be sixty feet. No, I think it's thirty five. Yeah. 60 feet, six inches. You were right. Oh, it isn't that far. Okay. So this umpire is standing behind a person looking at this pitcher who's 60 feet, six inches away, throwing a ball at a hundred plus miles an hour. Right. I mean, that is happening. First thing, it amazes me hitters can hit this. I, that, that's just a feat of, on itself. But these are trained athletes, right? The umpire, I mean, and they're just seeing pitch after pitch after pitch. And that's, you know, like you said, they're curveballs, they're, they're change-ups. You know, the pitch is coming in at 78, then then 105. And, uh, man, I I am actually f- just floored. They do as well of a job as they do with what they have. And they've done it so well for so long. But I do see that day coming to an end where we have something like pitch calm, and you just have that umpire representative back there who who's just kind of going through the motions so that everybody knows what pitch was thrown. So I think, I think it will there all be, be powered by AWS. There should AI. be a guy, there should be a guy in front of and next to the catcher blowing a vape cloud 
in into the box and then a laser just draws where the box is on there <laughs> what bring are you it, talking bring about bring the technology even further <laughs> um yeah. yeah you know so on a sort of related note my uh my wife is doing softball and uh she's on a, a 3 and 0 record right now her last game was uh 24 to 4 yeah, that's, that that tracks, especially for softball. Yeah, yeah. It was how, a, how's the? A little it, it was like thirty five degrees last week, so mm-hmm. it's got to be some pretty cold games. Well, it's in the morning, so it's about fifteen to twenty degrees. <laughs> See, that helps speed up the game too, because people just want to finish and get out of the cold. It's like, yeah, just you know, run the bases. Well, it's a beer league team, so. Most people have already started drinking and just don't feel the cold at eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, so did you watch did you watch my appearance on the North Meet South podcast? I didn't actually um you are a loser. No, I saw that you were on it, but it's titled The Vim Throwdown. And yeah. I immediately it's much of a throwdown. Well, that's the title of the episode. I immediately just went, ugh. You might have learned something. It's been a great series they've been doing. So, uh, Michael Drinda is a big Vim user. Um, yeah. Actually, I reach out to him a lot uh, with questions, and I think I've probably been technically using it longer than he has, but he's more into it than on that level than I am. Um, so, I'll you know, just say, like, I just. Uh, I, I kind of talking about on the show. I just know stuff I know because I've been doing it for so long. Like I don't, I'm, I never got. Like I, I tweak, I tweak mine, and I'm horrible at, at like being a good them person to go to because I am always tweaking my configuration. I'm always stealing other people's configurations. Um, but like I've always kind of just knowing what to do and how to do it and not really understand like well why does this work or how do i do this um and and michael drinker absolutely does he, you know he's like right. gotten under the hood on it but jake bennett has been more interested in okay why are we talking about this why is this why is this editor after all these years still considered a relevant editor and they've had a few shows on it um, I, I was on the fourth show and it was just fun. It was nice to kind of talk through some things and yeah, I enjoyed it. I, 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 I don't, I, I, I just, I, you know, I geek out and all this stuff, but yeah, I, I had a great time. Good. I, uh, Sevy says it was a great episode, so I'll take his word for it. <laughs> not mine. You're not going to take my word for it, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, but, actually, but I'm saying I, you should have watched it though because we're it's still there. You know, I we, might watch it still. They got they they go they've been going into a lot of they kind of they kind they kind of are all over the map. Like they kind of talk about the philosophies and, and well, why is this a thing? And then a couple shows they got really deep into. Okay, I want to do ABC. How do I do that? And kind of got into that. I think I, I think I kind of was more along the lines of kind of talking about just general concepts and why this is idea. I I tried to push it more of the narrative of the idea of the them movements, them philosophy, and not so much the, you know, them, them. They they brought the, they brought the street preacher to the Vatican for discussions and you were just sort of there with a cardboard sign going, but it's great. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they were just sort of rolling their eyes going yes it's great uh, here's why like i never i never even thought of it that way <laughs> that's a great that's a great point i actually said that because <laughs> i i said uh you know jacob uh jake bennett talked about uh what gave the the analogy because i was talking how one of the things that um them the them world struggles with is that everybody does it whatever works best for them so you know when somebody comes to you know two three them users and say how do you do this 
they get three answers or four answers or five answers. You know, it's, it's just, there's just so many different ways of doing something and nobody, there's not a standard way. There's the tool doesn't say, you know, do it this way on, on a lot of things. And I, 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 I made the analogy. I'm like, always thought of it as like fish fishing, right? Like anybody can go buy uh, a fishing pole, some line and some, you know, uh, what are they called? I, I, I've just blanked. Bait? My mind's just... No, not bait. Bite but crawlers. Uh, lures, lures. 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 But when you go to like a pier where there's some old time fishermen who've been doing it for a long <laughs> yeah. time, you know, they have like, they have custom, you know, uh, poles and they, they, they do their own lures because they know... They know how they want the lures to work and how they, so they have their own way of doing it. And it's not anything you can find anywhere else. And everybody will have a different opinion of what works best. And I always thought that was a good like analogy. I'm like, that's perfect. And, and Jake's like, no, 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 no. I look at it as like a suit. Like, sure, you can buy a suit off the rack, but it's not going to fit you right. Vim is like a tailored suit, but like a tailored suit for you wouldn't fit like Michael Dorinda correctly, but it fits you perfectly and it works perfectly. You know where all the pockets are. I'm like, yeah, shit, that's a better analogy. <laughs> that's so much simpler. Well, you might find this surprising is uh, I'm, I've kind of been enviously looking at PHP Storm. Well, not so surprising because you were a storm person before, right? You're one yeah. of the big, big people in storm. Why, why are you? Looking see, I'm not a so good, I'm not a good IDE user. That's my biggest thing. Is that for me? At, at this point, syntax highlighting and Copilot are like my requirements for an IDE. And here. Like you get little belt, you get bells and whistles, but as long as it, it can properly like detect the scope of things and like try to feed you the right variable for this thing that you're typing or like, you know, the right method, like I don't use it much beyond it's just sort of autocomplete and sort of basic helper stuff. Um, whereas if you, if you watch anything on Laracasts, you see Jeffrey Way type two things and then uh, four paragraphs show up on the screen and it asks him what what does he want these to look like. So it's like, I, I know you can do that stuff. I just don't do that stuff. Um, and and this is like the conversation that we kept having, where I was like, I was like, hey, check out this new feature, and you guys kept saying, yeah, that's an old feature in PHP Storm. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, that, that's oh, true. <laughs> oh, cool. So just because. I only see the release notes where they start pointing out this cool new thing that they they're doing. I don't mm -hmm. know what the the full feature set of the IDE I'm actually using is. So like every time something new comes out, I'm just sort of like, "Ooh, that's neat." And uh, <laughs> the one thing I saw is a uh, uh, JetBrains released PHP Storm 2022-1 or dot one, which includes. Uh, in place extract method refactoring. In place extract method refactoring. Okay. So you you highlight a block of code, and then you, you give it uh, Control Alt M, and it moves that code into a new method. Leaves your cursor in the same spot for you to type the new method's name. And then hit enter and the refactor is complete. So you you just move whole chunks out of the current method into their own new method. Which I this kind of thing I do a lot, where like I'll build up, I'll do DDD, I'll build up a method, and then I'll look at it and go, oh, it's hugely bloated. I need to break it down into some private methods to calculate these values and et cetera, et cetera. And like I'm so sure that's not that new because the feature itself, it turns out, isn't new in PHP Storm. It just used to be in a modal, and now yeah. it's like inline. That's what the inline part of it is. Yeah, when you're <laughs> explaining, I'm like, I thought you could do that before, but I'm looking at the release notes. I'm like, no, they they say it's new, but yeah, I see what you're saying. It, it is the inline piece of it. Yeah. Right, the inline piece of it is new, but the whole to me, the whole thing is new. I'm like, that's great. I need to watch more uh, PHP Storm video courses, and then I like fall asleep, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. 
So this is probably one of my bigger complaints with PHP Storm specifically is like, I feel like uh, 90% of the things I I think is are beneficial and I, ne- I would never use them. Or not that I would never use them. I would never remember to use them. I just don't use them. Like there's just, and, and this, this is probably an example of that. Well, yeah, that, that does seem like that would be nice to have. Uh, but I, you know, when the first so, time I need to use it, if I happen to be using PHP storm, I won't remember it's there. Right. Yeah. But what, what the interesting thing to me is, is that copilot tries to do most of this stuff. Well, it won't extract like, like as far as I know, copilot, the little bit I've used it it will only work in the method you're working in. Like it won't say, Not okay, here's anymore. an idea. Oh, really? I don't, I haven't seen an official announcement that it reads your whole project now because when it had come out, we did discuss quite a bit that it's, it's only reading the current page. But I never believed, I never believed that by the way, I it, always thought it was reading more of my code than the current page. It, it very much doesn't appear to be the case anymore. Because but, but I have I gonna, typed in some what, stuff that just went, whoa. What I was going to say, have you ever had a situation where it, it said, okay, here's an idea, put this code here, and now let's create another method that does this, and we'll use that. Because that's kind of what this is. It's, it's, it's not creating this stuff for you, but you're, you're basically saying, hey, I have this block of code. Go create another method with it. I don't want all this code here. Let's clean it up. Will Copilot do right. that? And just say, so, hey, I have an idea for like 50 lines of code, but let's just put this three line lines of code in this method, and then we'll create another method for the other code. Right. And at this point, there's not really like a context menu, so I can't highlight a, a block of code and then ask Copilot, hey, what do you think I should do with this? Or like, what are my options to do something with this? Mm-hmm. Um, Copilot also seems to be favoring shorter solutions recently than longer solutions. Uh, so when I first got Copilot, it would try to write out a couple paragraphs of functionality. And I don't know if this is the way I'm using it because I've learned how to interact with it, but recently it's just been like a one-liner. It just gives me one line to work with at a time. Um, specifically, I had a situation where I had to write a constant for each uh, month of the year, translating the, so the constant would be uh, January, February, March, April, and the value of it would be 010203. So with Copilot, I, I wrote January equals 01, and then I hit new line and give it a half a second to think, and then tab, because mm-hmm. it auto-filled February equals two, and then half a second on the next line, and then half a second on the next line. So I could do the whole January, February, March. I could do all the way down to December automatically, but it was a one line at a time. Um, and when I had first installed the plugin, you could you could sort of scroll through a list of what it thought you were trying to do. But recently, I don't have that option. I just get the one... Uh, recommendation from Copilot. So, interesting. I am. Um, I, I that that's actually one a good reason for me to uh, spin uh, PHP Storm back up. I, I stopped using Copilot and Vim because uh, they weren't updating that plugin uh, very frequently at all. And uh, my configuration, there's something clobbering there's something going wonky with my configuration code pilot where when I install copilot, every time I hit tab, some bad things happen. So I, I just uninstalled it. I, it's you, you want to hear something funny? Hold on. I got a couple, I got a couple things before you go down there. Uh, first thing, um, you, you, <laughs> after, after I did the podcast with uh, North meet South guys, you know, again, I was trying to champion the idea of the Vim philosophy and other editors. I'm like, well, shit, you know, I, I, I need to fire up Storm and just make sure, you know, my Vim configuration works well there. Sure. <laughs> and I and, and I don't avoid Storm. I, I want to be clear on that. I, I've, I've, I think I've been pretty harsh on PHP Storm. Not harsh, but I, I think 
people have the perception that I only work in the terminal VIM and I try not to do that. Uh, I do spin up and I will even spin up VS code from time to time. Um, again, just to make sure my, everything is, you know, is updated and uh, my bindings work correctly. <laughs> but the funniest thing happened uh, this week. I fired up PHP storm. I don't know what, why I've never had this problem before. And if you're a long time listener to the show, you know I'm a Pop OS user. So that's my full time desk desktop is a Linux Pop OS system. And uh, I don't have a lot of issues with it. It works pretty well. I mean, I, I don't have any more issues with it than I do. I seem to have with every OS. I'm just either brutal on my OS, OSs or whatever, but all my OSs seem to ha all have these weird hiccups. But Pop OS, I've been using for a few years now. And I went to spin it up and it just was invisible. Like it was running. I have <laughs> stacks. I could see where the window was supposed to be. It just wasn't there. It was like this funny thing where I'm like, do I was working. I'm like, all right, let me do this in Storm. And I fire up Storm. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> I still don't know why that happened. And I actually haven't fired it up again to see if it stopped, but it was just like, uh, yeah, it was a goofy thing. But what I really wanted to say before I went on that tangent, uh, the article that got posted in Discord, the blog post from JetBrains, did you see who the author of that is and who does the video uh, in the article? The the video at the top, what's new in PHP Storm 2022.1? No. That is the first post from Brent. Brent is from, or was from Spotty. This ah. is, so he went from Spotty to JetBrains. And apparently this is his first, uh, first post. So he was already kind of doing this uh, for Spotty. Uh, I don't know if he did PHP Storm stuff specifically, but he was always doing like he was already doing like these videos for. I don't know if he did it for Spotty or if he just did it for for himself, but yeah, that's he, that's the company I believe he was at before he moved on to Jet, JetBrains. I think that's the right guy. I'm pretty sure that's him. I should look it up before I uh, had said all that, but <laughs> I'm gonna look it up now. Let's see, Spotty. Yes, as my fact, it looks like he's still on the About Us page. Is he, Brett? Uh, yep, he he is still on the About Us page. Is he still there? Did he not leave? I thought he left and went to work at JetBrains. He's the content manager at PHP Storm. There you go. So, yeah. Mm. Yep. 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 Well, so. Sevi asked a question in Discord. Sevi, Discord. Live input. You can join us. Discord.phpaakley.com. He says he finds the idea of Copilot really cool, but worries that it's it, bec it becomes a crutch. Um, and he's asking, you know, is, is like, that an assumption? Yeah, is it a crutch? Am I worried about that? I will absolutely tell you, I am not worried about that. Because I have been a programmer in PHP for 20 years, 21 years. So like, it's not like I'm developing new bad habits. I am actually just fixing old bad habits every day I start, you know, every day I code something new. Is it a crutch for a new programmer? Uh, not much yes. more than Stack Overflow is, but Stack Overflow is a crutch too. I think, I think that's a great point to make i think that it does open the potential for more poorly written code being introduced but you oh, know, i, just, it, I think gonna, it writes very clean code that's just going to happen regardless i think yeah and it, it it's absolutely it's it's a crutch i can honestly say i maybe write like i actually type 50 percent of the code i have which you, are you saying the other fifty percent is code pilot? Uh, the other fifty percent is either code pilot or IDE auto completion, oh, where, yeah. where it knows it knows the name of the methods in the controller I'm referencing, so it just fills them out for me, and that's that's the crutch that 
everyone is used to and doesn't really call a crutch, but it is a crutch anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, it is, it is still equally a crutch. You, you don't have to look into the, you know, a properly documented library with proper annotations. You don't even have to open the file to know what the arguments have to be to pass into it with strong typing uh, lately in PHP. It's very easy to integrate a new hey. library without ever looking inside of it. We're all umpires now, and the computers are just telling us balls and strikes. We're just ahead of the game. It gets That's scarier, all. but we're not there yet. We're not there <laughs> yet. Uh, so it's it's absolutely a crutch, but it's also you can you can do things like ask it questions. You can write a comment to yourself that says uh, sum the value of the average of this array. Or no, I, I actually had an instance where I needed a complicated financial term uh, for a collection of values from an array. And I just typed it in as a comment to myself and Copilot was like, oh, I know what that is. Here's the equation for that. And it just did it. And <laughs> yeah. it was like, it is a complicated mathematical equation. And I verified the equation. I stepped through it piece by piece to make sure that it, what it was doing equated with what, with what I saw in the math blogs about this equation. But it did it because it knew what mm. that word was, and I didn't. Is that a crutch? I mean, it was a it was a learning resource. Mm -hmm. I didn't use the code without reviewing it. Right, and, and I think I think that's a that's an important uh, an important thing to note. It's like it something like this will will make will help good developers be better in bad developers be worse. It's it's one of these tools that depending on who you are and and your approach to development, it, it's either going to help you become a better developer or if you're just, if you're just trying to puke code out and you don't really care about development and I, you know processes and stuff, it'll, it'll just let you be worse. I, I honestly think that it leans more towards helping you be a good developer because as a bad developer, you can type a comment that says uh, this method uh, takes a list of names, inverts it and removes anyone whose last name is longer than four characters. And I can tell you that that copilot will write that better than I will the first time because it'll use a, it'll use a Laravel collection or something similar to that. And it will do a map reduce or it'll do a map filter and it'll do the whole thing in like one smooth line instead of me calling array flip for each. Like it, it knows about more stuff than I do. It knows more coding techniques than I do. Um, so if you're really heavily relying on it, I think you actually can learn a lot from it is if you're paying attention to it, watching what it does and why it does it and how it works. It's the same thing where I see people, I see people say that they copy and paste stuff from stack overflow. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like everything in stack overflow, every code snippet should have a, a fatal exception thrown somewhere because of a bad character, because people should never be copy pasting anything other than regular expressions from stack overflow. It's, it's to help you know how to write something, well, not to write don't it. Don't judge you. me. I, I don't, I don't I feel like I'm being judged right now. I don't, I don't appreciate it. You know, it would be good if, if you did that, if we had accept like copy and paste from stack overflow through an exception, there's always something there to catch it. When you're in production, a thousand things can go wrong. You could deploy a bug in your latest release. Your background jobs can silently fail. Someone could trip over the network cable at your data center. And this all comes back to you. You need to know when bad things happen and be able to respond to them quickly. That's why we built HoneyBadger. It's easy to install HoneyBadger in your backend applications and front-end JavaScript. It only takes a few minutes of configuration and you'll have monitoring done. That's because we hook into popular web frameworks, job systems, and the browser so that when any of them crash, we can automatically let you know. We ping your application from our global fleet of servers to let you know about problems with connectivity, latency, and SSL certificates. And we monitor your recurring jobs to see if any of them stop recurring. 
When there's a problem, we alert your team using the tools you already use. We can create issues in GitHub, Jira, and other issue trackers, and send notifications via Slack, PagerDuty, or other channels. When you click through, you'll be taken to detailed information on the error. You'll see things like request parameters, headers, user information, and the backtrace. Click on any line of the backtrace to view it in GitHub, Bitbucket, or your local editor. When you fix a problem, just mark it resolved and follow up with the affected user. That's HoneyBadger. We're the monitoring tool for web developers who'd rather be, well, developing. Thank you, you HoneyBadger. Honey I'm challenging. I'm challenging the Discord right now to add, to to do something complicated with an array, and I'll give them back a result in three seconds. From from co copilot. From copilot, because oh, we tried we tried doing this before, and then we got poo pooed on it. This is stupid. Why are we doing so, this? So yeah, that's stupid. the thing. My buddy, oh, I told he's not here. <laughs> I told my buddy, I told my buddy, my coworker about copilot a long time ago he's listened to the podcast he's heard all about it and i'll send him stuff every once in a while where i'm like look, look at how fucking cool this is and he's like yeah, yeah it's pretty cool he got approved for copilot last week and i just started getting floods of pictures and videos from him where he's it like man so cool. i wrote one comment i didn't even write a comment i, I named the method and the... See, i still yeah that's it i still don't write comments like i always forget that's that's actually that you can talk feature. to it yeah i i just start typing and let, let it figure out what i'm doing and and, and do this all right i got one for you i see some people typing in discord but i got one i'll make i'll make it easier for you all right accept an array and alphabetize it i as it like a new method I'm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's so, fine. yeah. So what I'll do is I'll write public function for all you people listening to audio podcasts. I'm sorry. This uh, this is one of those live moments you have to be in Discord to see what's happening right now. Why don't you share? We need to share our screens more, man. I'm telling you, people want to see our screens. I you know I've been thinking about doing that for this. Yeah, I, I totally think we need to share our screens. So that's not even complicated, though. So the, the know, portion, if you look in our Discord, the portion think anything. the portion in gray was written by Copilot. So sort so I, of, I, yeah. I wrote, yeah, an I wrote, so I wrote alphabetize array, opening bracket. It wrote the rest. Yeah, so you didn't, you didn't even do it as a comment. Look, it looks like, uh, it looks like uh, Sevy put something in there. Take a take a multi-dimensional array of dates in different formats and organize them chronologically, preserving the original format. I don't think that's I don't think you could try it. I, I would copy and paste that. Make that the comment. Copy and paste that right there and see what happens. This is exciting, exciting podcasting right here. I need to get PHP Storm running again. I, I really should get back to that at some point. I'm not going to fire it up during the show. My It'll slow everything down. And I got a beefy box. Uh oh, uh oh, shh. Sarah has found us. Uh oh. So what <laughs> I wrote was... I pasted his request. I pasted uh -huh. I pasted his comment. And the first thing it decided was that the comment was incomplete. So it added another comment that said, so that we can compare them easily. It wanted a purpose of doing this action. So I accepted its comment of, so we can compare them easily. And once I accepted its comment, it output an array map where it took the dates, formatted it, and returned them with the format and value of the dates in its original format. So it it figured out what the format of the date was on a per element basis, added a new key for what that format is, and returned it in the original format that it came with, mm. as well as, so it didn't organize them mm. chronologically, 
what it did was create an array where it figured out what the date formats were. Yeah. So if I give it if if I give it a chance to write another line, then it produces this. And this would be uh, there's your sort. I a see. sort. Dates. Grab the keys. Output the results. Now, if I had done so, this, as, if so I had forced you... a collection type, then it would have done this in fewer lines. It would have said it would have started using Laravel collection map reduce techniques. Hmm. So when you said if you, you I, I believe you said something. If I let it do another line, it, it produced this. But uh, what did you have to do to let it do another another line? In this instance. You're, you're... In this instance, I, I hit enter to go to a new line, typed in dollar sign dates, and it did the rest. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it too. So I, I indicated I indicated to a copilot that I wanted to continue working with the dates variable, that something about it wasn't complete yet, and it did the rest of it. Dates, date, date. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I think Copilot is cool. I think it it it's just like any other tool. It, you've got to you. The more you know, the better you, you you can use it. But yeah, that's something I noticed. Actually, let me look in yours. Um, oh no, you didn't. Yours didn't. I, I noticed when whenever I used copilot it seemed to always use the uh, long syntax for for array it always said array and did the array but yeah it, I, it's getting smarter it's getting smarter mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it does it has some bad tendencies but it's also the code base that it reads to generate these results is getting more uh, php 8 friendly so if you try to do something with enums, it knows how to do that now because more and more code bases on GitHub are using 8.1 enums. Yeah, I love enums. I mean, I don't love them. It, enums has been fun to work with. Oh, Sarah is starting trouble in Discord. Why? I'm curious why that would be. Why can't, why would, why are, are you, are you being funny? Or are you serious? Are, are you really think array parentheses is, is better than the, just the square brackets for array, Sarah? This is why, this I, is why she's banned from Twitter. This is, <laughs> this is going to get her banned from, from ugly. You, you really got to be, you, you really got to hit a new low to get banned from PHP ugly. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm glad that this came up though, because. There's an article in Strategery, which is a very, very technical, uh, professorial site. Uh, everything on Strategery is, is very in-depth, very analytical, <laughs> broken down, really, really... Is that like the George Bush Strategery? Is that, no, it's is it's it's, it's it's an academic approach to everything. So it's long blog posts, and uh, the most recent one is covering an AI platform called Doll E. Uh, actually, Doll E two. You got a Trello card in this? I'm I'm looking for. I got it. Doll E. I got it right here. Yeah. Um, it's not currently publicly available. It's sort of a. Uh, available for research institutions to do stuff with this. Um, but it is an image generating AI in which you can oh, just talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. You can just tell it the picture you want and it makes that picture. Uh, this goes all the way from photorealistic of uh, two bears programming or two bears, teddy bears, working on AI research on the moon in the 1980s. And from that, it figures out which types of computers they're going to be working on from the 80s 
it figures out what the teddy bears are going to look like. It figures out what AI research looks like to it and what the surface of the moon looks like. And it generates a photo real picture that a year ago you would have assumed was somebody set this up on a little sound stage and made a diorama for it. Mm-hmm. Um, another one is that uh, they asked it for a photo of a quaint flower shop storefront with a pastel green and clean white facade and open door with a big window. And without really close attention to the generated image, you would think someone just took a picture of a flower shop with white, like only white flowers and green leafy bushes. Mm-hmm. You, you couldn't tell that this was not a photograph. So you had posted this in the company Discord, uh, I think it was today, and I was serious. I would use this service tomorrow for yeah, absolutely Architect. absolutely because i mean this when we do the cover of php architect this is what it boils down to and it's always like well i wish there was a picture of you know a computer doing this or i, I should look at like some of the old titles that we we deal with but yeah, you know, I, I know it's like, I, oh, I, I wish there was one of an elephant breaking coding, you know, something something along that lines. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would use this and I, I would pay, I would pay money for this tomorrow. So it, it, I've, the the article here is on Stratetry, but if you look at the uh, Twitter thread from at Becoming Critter, you can see a, a wide variety of examples of how people have applied this where they they said they want a rabbit detective sitting on a park bench reading a newspaper in a Victorian setting. And the image produced was out of a children's book about a rabbit detective in the Victorian times. Like, indistinguishable from human work. And it just, it was just like, yeah, this is a Victorian bench. There's a rose bed and there's a tree behind him and a nice Victorian building. And I'll, I'll use, I'll do like a watercolor oil oil painting style um you keep you talking. Would, I'm, I'm just joining the wait list right now so you just keep, keep talking it is it is extraordinary um it, and especially like your example elephants doing programming someone asked for an elephant tea party on a grass lawn and it produced a fully children's book usable piece of art for an elephant tea party like incredible stuff um, and that's not even getting into like where it starts to get photorealistic. Somebody asked for uh, a Shibu Inu dog wearing a beret and a black turtleneck photograph, portrait photograph. And like, why do you need, why do you need photographers anymore? Why do you need anyone? This is, it's, that's what it gave you. It gave you that exact thing. Uh, <laughs> like, an otter in the style of a girl with a pearl earring. You just sort of go, how the fuck does it do this? <clears throat> and so the the company producing this or the group producing this is talking about possibilities sort of very lightly. But one of the things they, they said is uh, that it, it is is an example of how imaginative humans and clever systems can work together to make new things, amplifying our creative potential. And one of the things that you see a lot in the last 10 years is indie video game companies where one guy makes the music, the artwork, the story, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But imagine if you had a game, a text-based adventure game like Zork from the eighties or the early nineties, And you just fed all of the outcomes and all of the descriptions from the video game into this algorithm and then just had it do all of the artwork for you. And if you didn't like it, you could slightly tweak it or you could change the art style. You could have a video game where you could just select a filter and the art style changed to whatever you typed in. Mm -hmm. It's like, I want this in the style of modern art. Yeah, it makes the game really hard to play and sort of an interpretive dance piece, but it does it. Or like, I I want this in the style of of Dune book covers. Like, and it just immediately takes 
because all you are giving it is the description of the scene. And it's making its artistic decisions based off of that. And then you just give it a, a slight, a little bump further and say, I want it like this. You could have independent people producing incredible content on the level of, of mist within a couple days. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this goes back to the conversation is AI becoming a crutch for content creators for, for creatives. Uh, you know, I'm using copilot to program a game and then I'm using Dolly two to generate the artwork assets. And then I'm using another AI to generate music in the style of like, I could do the whole, I could not write a single thing except for comments and code tweaks and produce a functional video game, which is, it's an incredible step forward but it's it's scary i mean it this is the kind of technology that can replace you know people. what else is scary it's scary when something goes wrong with your oh we already did that huh <laughs> yes speaking of things going wrong eric went wrong he was no, gonna uh, say you know what's scary is the number of people that support us on patreon oh, that's a good catch that's a good catch. I'm good with that. Thank you, all our Patreon supporters. I need to clean that up a little bit. It looks like that last row is a bit, little bit of a bigger font. Let me just it does look a little bit. Clean that up a little bit. So why this is why this is going? Let me just say, um, we've talked about it on the show recently. It wasn't like this big earth shattering thing, but. Uh, Twitter, Sarah, you can tune out now. We're going to talk about Twitter a little bit. I know it's not like a good oh, no. subject for you. <laughs> Sarah's, Sarah's itching to get back in the game now. Get, get <laughs> but, unmanned uh, by Daddy Elon himself. Twitter, Twitter um, gave people the the ability to create communities, but you had to like you had to uh, apply for it. So uh, for P as PHP architect, I'm like, hey, you know. We're PHP architect. We're this uh, community, PHP community, um, you know, news source. Can we have a group for PHP? And it wasn't. It, it's not. It wasn't meant to be like a, an extension of PHP architect or anything like that. I just kind of, I kind of used the like the the followers and stuff of PHP architect just so that Twitter would say, okay, yeah, they're legit. I think if php ugly or or just myself as an individual had uh applied they might have just said no so i wasn't trying to say you know i wasn't trying to use php architect to do this but but i used php architect to to create a php community in twitter and honestly yeah, i kind of forgot get, about didn't get it. my invite you sure did because i put it in discord several times um here i'll put it in there right now Oh, I did. I did. I am part of the community already. Yeah, I'm like. So I, uh, so it it got created. It, it kind of had like a really slow start. Like people weren't sure is this like a PHP architect thing or what. And and I didn't want to post to it too much because I didn't want to like give that impression. And I'm also like, oh, I I I'm like hitting way above my weight class when i try to get you know talk php with like a lot of really talented people like you know sarah and, and people like that um but i have honestly enjoyed this community a lot like it's my go-to place on when i when i hit twitter i bounce over to uh the php community because like all these people are posting to it now and it's PHP focused. It's it's like it's so good. I, I, I am always so thrilled. I'm like, this is so great. I'm like, oh, that's right. I, I did this, didn't I? That's awesome. So yeah, okay. check it out. I it's in it just posted to our Discord channel. If you listen to audio podcasts, I don't even know how you search for this stuff in Twitter. I don't know if you can oh, yeah, search have, for communities or not. I don't even know how to pull up my communities. So for me, I, I notice it's in different places for people. For me, it's it's on on under Home Explorer 
and then it's communities, but on some of them, you have to click on more, and communities is under more. I don't know why or, or how to differentiate those. Yeah, so like for PHP Architect, the, the, the account behind creating this community, I have to click on more, and then communities is in there. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what, what differentiates the two, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I found the invite so I can find the community from there, but And I don't even know I don't even know if you can search. Like I said, I don't even know if you can search for it. Let me go to let me go to PHP Ugly and try to hit PHP <laughs> like search just search for PHP community. That's so funny. Then Ramsey's PHP C comes up. What? Yeah, see, see, I just did a, I just typed in PHP community, um, and like I said, Ben Ramsey's PHP community comes up, uh, but the actual community, PHP community news, which I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you find, I don't know how this becomes discoverable, but whatever. There's, there's almost like a thousand people in there, so that's fine for, fine for, by me. Sarah, I'm so happy you're here. Yes, I will say it. I said it on the podcast last week. I will get roundtable. I am getting roundtable going again. I promise you. I'm getting these taxes done, and roundtable is is next on my agenda. It's happening. It's happening. But there's other darker Twitter news. Oh, hold on. Hold on. What for happened? the for the visual crowd. There's other oh, yeah. darker Twitter news. But that's lighter. That's I know. You went uh, okay. <laughs> it's red. Red's bad. Red. Oh, I can do red too. You should told me. Let me get my red going. Okay. We're doing we're doing red. Uh red. 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 Last week we talked about Elon Musk buying the largest single shareholder uh, um, amount of Twitter. Um, this there, there's some interesting numbers behind that or terms behind that. A, a single holder can be a group. An individual holder is just one person. So for a while, he was the largest single and individual holder of shares of Twitter at 9.1%. Uh, he made a billion dollars off of this investment in one week. What? Yes. God, rich people get richer. Although he spent, what, $5 billion to, to get that percentage? Mm. That's a pretty good return. Yeah, a billion dollars in a week. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a pretty good. Um, and there was that he he was offered a position on the board as long as he promised not to buy any more shares above fifteen percent total of the company value. Uh, he mm -hmm. came out and said, "Ah, you know what? The board of directors thing, not for me." Uh, at the same day, the Vanguard Group, which is an investment group, uh, bought ten and a half percent of Twitter making them the largest single investor, but not the largest individual investor in Twitter. Uh, so he only held that for a couple days. Uh, but then the other day he comes out and says, you know what? I'm going to buy Twitter for $54 billion. I, I'm willing to buy 100% of the shares uh, for $54 billion. You think, and, and he's probably serious, huh? Well, it's a thing he can afford to do. It has to go through the Twitter board of directors and the investors in Twitter because they actually own the shares. Um, but it would mean he basically owns the company outright as the only investor in the entire publicly traded company which is crazy, but it's also 
an evaluation of Twitter's value that is way above what it's actually worth. So what he's offering them isn't just to buy the whole company for uh, what they think it's worth. He's saying, I'll buy it for much more than it's worth. I'm, I'm sweetening the pot with about an extra $10 billion in value over what the shares are currently trading at. Um, if that seems grossly irresponsible and stupid, then you know how Elon Musk works. So yes, grossly irresponsible and stupid. Um, <clears throat> no one in the right mind would actually do this. Like just value a stock at uh, 10 or 15% more than it's actually selling for on the open market, <laughs> especially after it shot up on the news that he had invested in it at 9.1%. This is a crazy move. It appears that the board has already declined and said, yeah, we're not selling the entire company to one person, no matter what you decide the value of it actually is. Because no. So it doesn't look like it's going to happen. However, as things are with news on the internet, the result of the thing is not going to get circulated nearly as quickly as the actual initial crazy proposal. Um, but yeah, he wants to like create a free space on the, you know, fix the first amendment issues with Twitter and uh, just fuck that guy. <laughs> Just fuck him. He he raised enough in one week to to actually build and deploy a viable competitor to Twitter, and he has enough super fans that he could probably do it. This whole thing is just going to pump the value of Twitter. And why then, don't he go by what what's the what's the Trump one called? Truth. Truth. Why don't you, why, why does he just go by, go by Truth? I think you know why. I'm why, why eat lobster when there's a perfectly good trash can right here? <laughs> and the other one, par you know, I'm on Parlor. I I'm on Parlor because of the PHP community. Oof, somebody geez. from somebody from the PHP community, way 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 back. So this was actually after the first um, Longhorn, the Longhorn conference. Uh, ran into a PHP community member there who was a friend of John's and we got talking and he was like, Hey, there's a, there's a new social media platform. That's going to be better than Twitter. It's called parlor. I have invites for it. It's invite only. I'll send you an invite. I'm like, I ain't sure. And back then it, it was like, there was a new, you know, better than Twitter service coming out every couple months and I always like to kind of stay current on it. And this came out and I looked at it. I'm like, yeah, whatever. You know, I can't auto post to it. I can't cross pose. It's so I, I, I actually completely forgot about it. And of course, parlor became a huge deal during yes. Trump's presidency. And all of a sudden I started getting hammered with all these emails. I'm like, how did I even get on this? Because I had forgotten about it. Like, this is years later. I totally yeah, yeah. forgot. Got, I'm like, how am I getting on these mailing lists? And so I, I clicked on one of the links, and my one password says, do you want me to autofill your login? I'm like, what? what? I don't have a login for this? <laughs> I certainly don't. <laughs> I mean, there's like some porn sites I'd be surprised I have a login for, but I am just flabbergasted I have a login for this one. So, yeah, I'm, a, yeah. I'm in Parlor. I think I'm, if if you're in Parlor, I think I'm probably, I, I haven't logged into it. I just kind of refuse, but I'm probably Shokum on Parlor too. Well, I, I will, I will, I will repeat my guess as to what Elon Musk's goal is here is that he's got this 9.1% investment. He raised a billion dollars in four days out of this investment. Uh, I think he's trying to pump. This is a crypto thing. He's trying to pump the stock with a, with a bad faith offer and bail on his percentage 
under the auspice that he wants to create his own social media empire and basically start with a, a brand new two billion dollars that he well, didn't have before to fund this new company. Listen, you know more than any of us. He doesn't start anything. He just that's true. He just acquires. So I actually, think you're, I think I did find you out. might be par- partially right, though. I think he wants to do a pump and dump, but then yes. he's going to be. Well, I'm selling. You know, once he reco- recoups all of his billions of dollars that he invested and then some, he'll say, "Okay, I'm out now because you know they won't let me buy the company." So. I'm pull. I'm pulling all. I'm selling all my shares, and that's that's what's going to happen. Yeah, and and to be clear here, what he's doing is probably illegal. Um, pump and dump. It's a gray, it, it's a gray pump, area. It's, it's a gray area in the fact that he has enough money to pay the fines and still come out <laughs> positive a billion dollars. So <clears throat> it's technically it's it's a finable behavior. But he will never experience any negative impact from such a thing. I want to be clear on something, okay? I, despite what I just said, Elon, if you're listening to this, and I'm always surprised with how many people do actually listen to the, this podcast. If you're listening to this, a million dollars, two million dollars, whatever that number might be, PHP Architect is yours. Dude, you just hit me up. Or, or any of your companies that would advertise on PHP Architect, just let me know. Yeah. Also, uh, Listen, I do I'm, have. I'm not proud of it, but I, I will. I will take the money. Yeah, I'll take a Tesla. I do have a correction. I said that I said in the past that Elon Musk had purchased the title of founder from the original founders of Tesla. Uh, it wasn't just that he had purchased the title of founder. Is one of the original founders was still calling themselves the original founder of Tesla, so he sued him and won. Well, yeah, obviously, uh, you, if you spend a couple million dollars and say, "Hey, I'm buying this title," and then somebody says, "Well, I'm actually the real creator of it," you would sue him too. Which is I, the I, truth. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't fault him for that. I want to be clear here. He wants. He wants to have an open conversation on First Amendment rights and social media. He sued the founders of Tesla for the truthful claim that they were the founders of Tesla. That's a very broad statement. I'm sure there were some specific legalese about how they could present that. Sure, there are titles. So one of one of the I, one of those legalese is we can ban anyone we want because the First Amendment does not apply to a corporate platform. So every You're time someone brings up, again. yeah, no, every time someone brings up thing. First Amendment shit in relation to Facebook and Twitter, I immediately ignore them because they yeah. obviously don't understand what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and yeah, whatever. Getting, I, getting, I, I, getting dry mouth. Been ranting about Elon too, Musk. I gotta. I, I have to refresh my beer. Ten seconds. You know, wait. Ten seconds. What? Ten, Ten seconds? seconds. I'm here by myself. Start juggling or something. Well, this is awkward. If this was a round table, I might have more people to talk to. I'm just saying. Sarah Goldman. Why aren't you here? Sarah Goldman was on on um what was the other PHP? What was the PHP podcast you were on, Sarah Sarah, for a good good moment? Um, what was Phil Sturgeon's uh, PHP podcast called? Voices of the Elephant. No, 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 no! Come on, it's it's still a podcast. Um, him and Ben were on it. Uh, come on, it, it was like PHP Town Hall. Thank you, A Wood. PHP Town Hall. Sarah was on PHP Town Hall all the time. I'm, you know, I'm having to beg for them to pay attention to, to me. Whatever, Sturgeon was on Town Hall. Yeah, I think about that all the time when we talk about moving the day we do our podcast. We're like, well, we can't now. Harry Mack has the song. And if you listen to PHP Town Hall today, they still have the song with Phil's a you know, bike rider. Yeah, you know, like Phil Sturgeon and Ben. It's their song, but it's not them doing the podcast anymore. We could buy a new song. 
Look, look, okay, <laughs> Mr. Money, throwing yeah, no, money I'm, around. I, I'm, I'm guessing it's it, quite a bit much more money than it used to be. <laughs> I'm sure Bri- Brianna isn't busy. I'm sure she'll be happy. She'll pump that baby out and just, you know, lay down some lyrics for us. Yeah, ex- yeah. absolutely. I don't see why not. Hey, Woods, do you think I would do something that crazy? I just might. That's, I just I, might. I, I would 100% listen to that. The only person in the world who could interrupt you and tell you to shut up because you're wrong. And you would just sit and take it. But that wouldn't happen. Because we all agree I'm not I'm not wrong, ever. We have no, no. a line The up. song there, there, states clearly, I'm never wrong. There, no, I thought, was it you that, were, that was never wrong? I'm never wrong. I thought you were doom and gloom. I thought John was never wrong. Oh, no, John's silent. John's quiet. Yeah. He starts a riot. Don't don't be mean. Sarah, Sarah's so mean to me. <laughs> I, Again. We have a line. We have a lineup. It's going to happen. This kind of I bullying promise. from Sarah Goldman is against the terms of service for YouTube. Banum. We're banning them from PHP Ugly. No, it's going to happen. I don't know. Should I? Should I? Should I give give more away? You, you guys might be surprised. Nope. You guys might be surprised about. Uh, some of the plans we have for roundtable, and I will say we, because I have spoken to others. <laughs> All right, I'm not. I'm not going to say anything. We we need to. We need. I need. I need to get the collective together, and uh, we're going. We're going to record. We're going to record. I. I I'm going to say this right now. I will schedule a recording of PHP Ugly. Don't like that. I'm already messed up. A PHP roundtable. I will schedule a recording of PHP roundtable within the next 30 days. Where are we at? March 14th. So by May 14th, keeping in mind, I have wedding anniversaries, birthdays, uh, my birthday, my wife's birthday. I have a lot going on in the next 30 days. With that said, you know, and I just lied. My wedding anniversary is actually after the next 30 days. But it is tonight. With that said. I will have schedule now. I won't say we will record because I do have a lineup of of people to to you know be with me on in the round table. So I don't know what everybody's schedule is like, but I will get something on the books within the next week, within the next two weeks. Give me two weeks because I'm still wrapping up ta- taxes. I will get something on the books by next show, by next by, by, the, by the show after next, within thirty days. We're gonna do this. I promise. I promise. Things are happening. So I don't usually cover new versions of Laravel on the weekly basis, mostly because the new versions don't have anything that interesting. But Laravel 9.8 came out this week. Uh, I am not on Laravel 9 yet, but this kind of makes me want to get to it. Uh, oh, Laravel eight. nine eight already, huh? Yeah. Um, okay. Semver does funny things when you do it wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, a new contribution adds uh, custom log levels to exception handling, which I think is super. I can't believe that, that that's is something that, that didn't is a exist really good before. idea. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Like I have places all over my system where I'm manually saying like report this exception, don't report this exception, uh, you know, handle this one, don't handle this one, and this just like takes over such a huge amount of that work. Like, just even remembering to do that stuff, it, it's pretty pretty nice. Um, it's actually it's one of those features that's like so good. You're like, it wasn't that already in the wasn't that already part of the system? Like, didn't we already use that somewhere? <laughs> like, no, you, we wrote a custom version of that kind, like that idea. But no, now it's a default in 9.8. Uh, you... And there's also some like tweaks to factory and stuff like that. But that's the thing I saw in the release notes where I was like, ooh, neato. King, are you able to refresh my memory? So uh, uh, another feature is discover anonymous blade components in additional paths. What, what yes. are anonymous blade components? I don't 
I don't recall what that is. What are anonymous blade components? I'm looking at. Looking so at most now. most blade components would be uh, their own file, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, what this does is uh, an anonymous blade component lets you define a component without giving it a file name. Huh? Um, you would you would create a component within a blade template that was just it's like a, if you had a blade template called components dot blade dot php you could define a bunch of anonymous components there but you had to reference components dot php to use them so now you can define them as anonymous components that will be discovered i don't i don't use blade much anymore mm -hmm. but that's my understanding of it I kind of, I kind of remember something like that. I'm lo I'm looking up some websites now. I can, I do kind of remember it being something like that. I just don't remember the details. Yep, I do like blade components. Uh, in light and there's a short jump between blade components and live wire because they're basically live wire is just blade components plus plus. It's uh, that does remind me one of the things I meant to talk about. I forgot uh, when it comes to PHP Storm 2022.1 is support for the call and call static magic methods where it will actually try to resolve those dynamic, those magic methods and properly fill out things, which is super impressive. That's a huge problem that I've had with all IDEs with Laravel is that there's these magic methods in Eloquent don't resolve to anything correctly. You have to annotate your models and there are tools to auto annotate your models, but you have to mm -hmm. do it for your, for your IDE to figure it out. And it appears that uh, PHP storm is working on no longer relying on annotations for call and call static, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. Sarah Goldman right. is claiming ownership of call static. Is that really true? Did you implement this in PHP Storm, Sarah? This is what's so awesome about this community. Probably. I, now, now I need to know the answer to that. And Sarah's on a delay. That's the thing. It's like you go to a conference or something and you're talking about about like something in PHP and you're sitting across the table from the person who implemented it. Yeah, where you're talking about something related to PHP and the person who wrote the framework walks up to you and you freeze up and then walk <laughs> away. Both both things have happened. Yes. We don't talk about that, that other one. All right. Uh, well, we need to wrap things up. Uh, Sarah, the question is still on the table. Are you the one who actually added call static to the PHP? She's saying she's never used PHP Storm, so I'm guessing this is one of those false flags that Fox News always tells me about. Gosh. That's hard. I will I am, okay. I have a I have a going away gift for all of our listeners today. What? A a previously paid book called uh Base Code Field Guide is now free. The light version is free. Uh, gives you the complete code samples, uh, access to uh, e-versions of the book, and uh, forever free updates on anything that changes in the book. It is a, a quote-unquote field guide containing real-world practices to help you write code that is less complex and more readable. So the goal in this is to make things person friendly versus machine friendly um I do want to I, just point out i just want to point out this is not published by php architect so you and i are going to have to have a conversation about what we share in the future but for now please continue ah so i'm misunderstanding <laughs> uh sarah goldman did not implement call static in 
PHP Storm, Sarah Goldman implemented call static in PHP. A somewhat more significant achievement. Depends on how you look at it. Sure. We'll, we'll give it to her. So that is my that is my freebie. Uh, if you want to pay for the book, there is an audiobook version. Uh, and there's a group Q&A access. Uh, I recommend checking it out. I've read a bit of it, and it seems like a very nice uh, product. All right. I think we are running long, and I've gotten my lashings from Sarah Goldman in Discord. So we're going to have to wrap this up so I can nurse my wounds. All right, that's it for episode 282 of PHP Ugly. I'm Eric. I'm Tom. Keep it ugly. Keep it ugly. Ah. One, two, one, two, uh, coming off the top, y'all know how we do, listen, I'ma drop a freestyle you can cherish, I'ma send a shout out to the host named Eric, yo, he's never on some average shit, you know, Eric, he stays loud and passionate, I'm about to break it down for y'all with the clever song, yo, shout the host named Thomas, cause he's never wrong, yo, shout to John, you know that he's smart and quiet, unlike my freestyles, which cause a riot, I'm about to do it like this, cause the people love me, shout out to PHP, the ugly, it's called ugly cause it's not professional, but I'm about to come through and bless it with style, so let's do it when I'm spitting, I perfume the room, yo, the segment of the show is called doom and gloom, that came from Thomas, yeah, can nobody go beyond this, I get the mic and then I'm about to keep it like a promise, yeah, and y'all know we fill them up with anguish, we talking about the PHP, the programming language, about to break it down, no exaggeration, what do y'all do for a living web applications, okay, I can dig it, my words spray tight, uh, they getting together on the Thursday nights, yeah, when it comes to rhyming, you can call me the new dude, I spew true lyrics while y'all broadcast on YouTube, so let's get it, you know my lyrics are major, all up in the comments, they got plenty of haters, but they doing what they doing, keep it ugly, we ending every show with the saying it's lovely, let's go. Hey, shout out to y'all, peace to the whole squad, man. Hope your channel is doing real well on YouTube. Hope you guys are having fun. And uh, it was an honor and blessing to do this little custom freestyle for y'all. Hope you enjoy. Stay up. Yeah. Huh. Hey. Huh. Oh, look at those elephant butts. Elephant butts. Spank them. Keep this running for a little bit. I can't talk if you do, or yeah, I say, or stop sharing it. I appreciate that. All right, Discord. I need titles. I need titles. I got two good ones here. I'm leaning towards. Uh, what are they? A Woods has crotch sign language. I'm assuming that is a baseball uh, play on the baseball. It's discussion. a quote. It's a, it's a quote from me. I said crotch sign language. Oh, there you go. Crotch sign language from A Woods and. Uh, declarative art. I kind of like declarative art from Buttery. Buttery crumpets. Declarative art or crotch sign language. Which one? Which one do you like, Tom? I like crotch or, sign or, language. You like crotch? All right, then it's going to be your face. Let's make it your face. Um, let me get uh, zoomed in on you here. 